Fantasy baseball season is beginning to ramp up with more drafts happening each week. So with draft season now in full effect, we here at Rotoball are wanted to go over the best ways to prep for your upcoming fantasy baseball draft. You may know this sport inside out or have been playing the game for a long time, but the thing that separates the great fantasy baseball players from the good fantasy baseball players is the work they do ahead of draft time. So in this video, we're going to go over some of the keys to prep for your upcoming draft including whether or not you should have your own rankings, how to use projection systems and ADP, what people mean when they talk about value, and how you can ensure you're drafting the most balanced team possible. Let's start with something that seems obvious but can't be overstated. You need to know your league settings. That doesn't just mean knowing if you're in a 12 or 15 team league or a wins league or a quality starts league. It means factoring in how often waivers run, how deep your benches are, and so much more. But even the basic factor of whether your league is a 12-team or a 15-team league shouldn't be ignored because it will directly alter how you prepare for your draft. 12-team leagues will have more usable players on the waiver wire, which means there'll be more flexibility for roster turnover. If the goal in fantasy baseball is to get as many quality at-bats and innings pitched as possible, then it's also important to realize that it doesn't matter where those innings or at-bats come from. Most people assume the top 150 or so players drafted are guys we really feel confident about. So if a player you drafted later begins to struggle, then there's somebody better on the waiver wire, you shouldn't hesitate to make that swap. In 12-team leagues, there are more intriguing options on the waiver wire so you can take more risks in your draft. One of my favorite examples this year is Josh Donaldson. I love Donaldson and wrote him up a few times on Rotoballer. However, he also has a long injury history, so people don't want to draft him, which is why he's going at pick 194. This makes him the perfect target in a 12-team league because, if he gets hurt, there's a strong chance you can find somebody to replace him on waivers. And remember that you've already banked Donaldson's strong stats when he was healthy. You would just add the replacement stats to that, which would mean you still get a strong player at that position. However, in a 15 team league, if Donaldson was your corner infielder, you might have to replace him with Yoshi Tsutsugo, which might not be a risk you want to take. Another seemingly simple setting to pay attention to is your roster construction. NFBC leagues will give you a 7-person bench but no IL spots, where your home league may allow for upwards of 10 bench players, or even have 3-4 to four IL spots. If you have a shorter bench or no IL spots, then you don't have the luxury to keep injured players on your roster. That means guys like Byron Buxton or Alberto Mondesi, who get banged up often, may be tougher for you to draft. Same goes for currently injured pitchers like Lance McCullers or Carlos Rodon. Knowing your roster size and construction helps you to know how risk-averse you need to be in drafts. This level of risk also applies to whether you play in a daily moves league or a weekly lineup lock league. If you're in a daily moves league, then you don't need to be as worried about players who may get rested during the week, like Donaldson or a guy like Anthony Rizzo who has back injuries. You can also be less worried about players who have pronounced platoon splits, like Austin Meadows or Akil Badu. Since you can bench those guys when they face a lefty or out of the lineup, them missing a few games here or there doesn't hurt you. However, if you're in a weekly lineup league and lock your lineup only to find that Donaldson is resting his calf for the next three days, you'll get no production. So you want to be more cautious about drafting players with platoon splits or rest issues. Quick interruption to talk to you about the MLB Rotoballer Challenge hosted by our friends at Fantrax. Fantrax is the most customizable free fantasy baseball platform in the industry, and that's why we're hosting our 2022 Rotoballer Challenge there. All leagues are free to join, and you get to compete against Rotoballer writers and readers for a shot at the $500 cash grand prize. All new Fantrax users also get entered into a free giveaway to win a signed official MLB Wander Franco jersey. Just go to rotoballer.com challenge and sign up for your team today. Lastly, on the topic of league settings, Focusing on whether your team is Roto League, Head-to-Head -head League, or a Points League is super important in terms of determining players that you're going to want to draft. If you're in a Head-to-Head -head League, you may be less inclined to dive into the war for stolen bases or saves if you feel confident that you can win every week without that category. In a Head-to-Head -head format, relievers who don't get saves but will give you wins and solid ratios may also be way more valuable to you if you decide you want to punt saves but still want to ensure you can win basically every other pitching category. This also leads to our next rule, make sure to modify your projections. There are a lot of projection systems out there and they're becoming more and more accurate with every single season. I know there are people out there that are capable of doing their own projection systems, but if that's not you, that's fine. However, you should be using some form of projections when you're prepping for your draft. At Rotoballer, we love the work Ariel Cohen does with ATC projections, 
which have been ranked as the most accurate projection system for the last few years. However, even REL's projections need to know your league settings. Projection systems value a player differently based on the league format, so it's not enough to just look at projections online and take them as gospel. At Rotoballer, we have a customizable tool that allows you to take a projection system and then enter your league settings and have the projection system essentially rank the players for you. This is an invaluable resource and one that leads directly to our next point. You should have rankings when you draft. You can compile rankings by using a projection system like I just described, or you can use rankings from your favorite fantasy expert, but you should definitely have rankings. And these rankings should be a reflection of your beliefs. If you think projections are too high on Ryan Mountcastle given his plate discipline issues and the new ballpark in Baltimore, you can move him down in the rankings created by the projection system or your favorite expert. This is especially true for pitchers, since projection systems are notoriously less accurate in projecting pitching stats. For example, there are many people who believe Robbie Ray's breakout last year and think he's a top 15 or 20 starting pitcher. There are others who believe the home run issues are a problem and he gives up too much contact, so he's really closer to a starting pitcher 40. You should alter your rankings to reflect your view on players. Remember that this is your team, not a fantasy experts team and not a projection systems team. So you wanna make sure you're drafting a team you believe in. Once you have your rankings, we can now start to talk about ADP. It's important to remember that ADP is not the same as your rankings. I'll say it louder for the people in the back. ADP is not your rankings. We should be using ADP to let us know where on average players are being drafted which also means we need to be updating our ADP search to reflect the last three weeks or month and also the draft types that we're doing. Don't just pull any random ADP from the internet since we've already covered that different draft formulas will cause you to value players differently. Once we have the best ADP, we use that information to see where the consensus values a player. If the ADP on a player is higher than you have them in your rankings, that does not mean that you have to take that player there. The best use of ADP is to see when you need to be more aggressive on a player that you really like or when you can wait a few rounds because his ADP is going a lot later than you actually have that player ranked. For example, if you really like Joey Votto, like I do, and have him ranked 119th, but see that his ADP is 138th, you might decide to pass on him at pick 114 and feel confident that you can get him when you come back on the clock again at pick 120. However, you don't want to treat ADP like it's gospel because other drafters may jump ADP too. So if your next pick is too close to Votto's ADP and you think you might risk losing him, you can select him at pick 114. At the end of the day, your rankings are the key to your draft, but you should have ADP numbers ready as you prepare so you can have an idea of who you like more than the market. This connects directly to our next rule, make a draft plan before each unique draft. Once you know what pick you have for your draft, write out all the picks you have in the first 10 or so rounds, and then look through the ADP to see, on average, who will be taken around those picks. Consult your own rankings and map out who you'd like to take at the spots that you'll be picking in your draft. This will help you begin to use your rankings as a draft plan, making sure that you're picking guys at good value where you'll be drafting, and also making sure that you're getting toward your category needs for your specific league settings. Which leads us to our next rule, Know your category targets before you draft. It's not enough to say, I need steals, or I can wait on home runs. What is the larger number you need to hit? Most research over the years indicates that aiming to draft a team that hits the 80th percentile in each category will have you on the right track to winning your league. So make sure you've written down those targets before you start thinking about the team you want to build. Then keep a running tally of your categories as you do your draft plan to make sure you're on track with these categories. Lastly, you should take stock in what you do well. Again, as I said before, this is your team. Experts may really like a player or say that he has really good value at his current ADP, but you need to draft a team that you feel comfortable with. That also means knowing what your skills are and drafting your team around your set of skills. If you're really bad at finding saves on the waiver wire or finding closers late in drafts, then maybe you need to draft some closers earlier than experts may tell you to. However, if you're really good at finding starting pitching late in drafts or on waivers, maybe you can take more hitters in the early rounds and trust your ability to draft good pitchers late. Experts or projection systems won't know what you're good at, but you do. So trust yourself and factor in your own skills when you're making your draft plan. So just to review, once you join your league, you should be doing the following. Making sure to review the league settings in detail. Using your favorite projection system to create a set of rankings specifically tailored to your league settings. 
adjust those rankings based on your personal opinions, find the latest ADP for your league type, make a draft plan based on your draft slot or any slot where you might want to draft, and ensure that your draft plan gets you close to your category targets. And this is all before you even start to draft. If you want some tips to nail your actual draft or some players that we think you should be targeting depending on your league format, make sure you click that subscribe button to get all of our Rotoball or MLB content before the drafts begin and then also during the season.